I don't want to go home yet. Laurel didn't realise she'd mumbled it out loud as they turned off the motorway, onto the road that ribboned in sweeping curls down into the valley. Romeo glanced at her. What do you want to do? She drew in a deep breath to take the edge off the discomfort in her chest. It made no difference, but at least now she knew what it was. She was jealous. And watching Moki staring at Romeo all evening with a sickly, besotted expression had slammed her home. She liked him, and she hated that. Boys liked her, not the other way around. Worse, she was acting like an idiot, losing her temper, blurting out crap, and obsessing over what he was thinking, feeling. Her stomach turned over. What do you want to do? He said again. What? Where? Where am I going off from? Okay. She liked him, and she had, yeah, I went too early. She liked him, and she hated that. Boys liked her, not the other way around. Worse, she was acting like an idiot, losing her temper, blurting out crap, and obsessing over what he was thinking, feeling. Her stomach turned over. What do you want to do? He said again. She looked up at him and her face flushed with embarrassment. What? You could drive down into the river or something. Sure. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Great. Oh God. Please make me shut up. He took the next turn off and for about ten minutes they bumped over the pitted muddy track that cut through the bush to where Romeo usually parked when he was going for a swim. He pulled over and unclipped his seatbelt. Why don't we go down to the river? In the dark? Her voice was hesitant. Don't eels come out at night? He leaned his elbow on the steering wheel, looking out the windscreen. I don't intend to go for a swim. She watched him furtively in the darkness. All she could make out was the slight silvery sheen of moonlight bouncing back at her off his cheekbones. The straight edge of his jaw and the rounded curve of his lips. She couldn't breathe properly. Idiot, she told herself. She wanted to smack herself in the head. Instead, she deliberately bit the inside of her cheek, then wished she didn't because it really hurt. He reached across her and she jumped. Blushing fiercely, he flipped open the glove box to get the torch. Come on. The world was a different place in the dark. The full moon reflected off the surface of the water and cast everything with an eerie grey tinge. Romeo sat on a log and stared out over the river. Laurel walked to the edge of the water and peered down into it. She couldn't see a thing. Careful, it's slippery over there. Come back a bit from the edge. She stepped back. He laughed. Wow, you listen to me. I have to frame this moment. Embarrassed, she snapped at him. Not funny. She watched the gibbous moon's reflection shimmer and shake on the surface of the water. The tension was churning her up inside like a whisk, thickening a milkshake until she couldn't stand it anymore. Are you going out with Moki? No. She looked at him. You were holding her hand and... Hey, hey! His brows flew up and the white around his irises gleamed in the dark. The girl is in hospital. She just tried to kill herself because my uncle made her feel like shit. I was trying to make her feel better, that's all. The words leapt out before she had a chance of stopping them. But she likes you. So? I mean, she likes you, as in really likes you. He shrugged. So what? She buried her face in her hands. God, you are so stupid. She groaned through her fingers. What are you talking about now? I like you, she shrieked, finally losing her temper. 
Although I don't know why, considering you're the stupidest person on the freaking planet, a damaged single cell amoeba probably has a higher IQ than you. What? Humiliated, Laurel turned around and stared at the river. Nothing. No, no, you can't get out of it. You definitely said something. Her face burned up. Shut up. Nope, he replied, standing so close behind her. A gush of warm breath ruffled the hair on the back of her neck. She jumped and spun around, her nose centimetres from his chest. The world went silent. There was no tumble of rushing water, no nocturnal noises of the animals foraging or insects scampering about. No distant rumbles of traffic on the road. There was nothing. It was as if the world had gone stuck between the moments. She counted off in her head. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and the next moment arrived. She could hear her own breathing too fast and way too heavy. Pulse pounded in her ears. She couldn't say anything trailed a finger across her forehead, dragging her fringe out of her eyes. His touch almost sent her rocketing up into space. Every square millimetre of her skin was so sensitive, she had the weird feeling she and her surface covering had become separate entities. Her head jerked back and she looked up at him, now a greeny silhouette of light and shadow. His hand slid around the back of her neck and he held her head still, his other hand snaking around her waist. Both hands were shaking. So, you like me, huh? She nodded dumbly. He bent towards her, blocking out the light. Not as much as I like you. Then he kissed her.